I think that we have to operate uh, on what we do know in 2019 because we also know that there are a whole host of uncertainties domestically uh, and globally. Uh, but we know uh, that uh, the fiscal stimulus that gave us a couple of quarters of very good growth in 2018, uh, we're finding out into year end uh, that there was no uh, multiplier impact from the fiscal stimulus. Uh, and we're going to go into 2019 uh, with the stimulus becoming a fiscal hangover, uh, as Sarah just mentioned. Uh, we also know that the peak impact of what the Fed has already done uh, is going to end up having its peak impact in 2019 in terms of the impact it's going to have uh, on growth, just as the tightenings in 2005 and 2006 had the ultimate impact in late 07, 08. Look for the cascading lagged impact of what the Fed has done uh, to hit home on the domestic side of the economy uh, in the coming 12 months. Uh, on top of that, uh, what is the outlook for U.S. exports when the OECD leading indicator is down 11 months in a row, uh, not too positive? And we also know, and uh, one of you had mentioned about what's happening on the corporate balance sheet. Remember all that debt that was taken on to fund those massive record uh, stock buybacks? Well, uh, 2019 represents the first year of four years where we're going to av average a trillion dollars of corporate bonds maturing at much higher interest rates than where they were originated. That's going to have a monumental impact, in my opinion, on debt servicing costs. Whether it has an impact on ratings and debt downgrades remains to be seen. Uh, but the debt service drag, albeit from very low levels, is going to have a big impact on capital spending this coming year. So if we don't see an outright recession, uh, I think it's going to be the next rung up from that, which is an extremely weak economy for 2019. And you're yeah. seeing the analysts right now cut their earnings estimates in light of that prospect. N nothing rosy about that view. Lizanne, how much of it is baked uh, into the market already? Um, well, I, I have to concur with pretty much everything that, uh, that Dave said. Whether a full recession is baked into the market, probably not. I think uh, a growth slowdown, you know, we got down 19.8 on the S&P. There's actually, it's a fairly common occurrence to get just up to that down 20% bear market borderline and then pull back. And normally it has been in conjunction with a pretty significant slowdown, not necessarily a recession, although that has happened as well. I also think that, you know, a lot of discussion about the strength of the economy, particularly in the first half of the year and especially in the second quarter of the year, is being tied to tax cuts, when in fact of that 4.2 percent growth, about a percentage point of that was soybeans. It was front running the tariffs. So when we talk about the offset of negativity of trade to the benefit of fiscal stimulus, I'm not sure a lot of that strength we saw in the first half of the year was specific to fiscal stimulus. I think a lot of that was just the vagaries of, of trying to get ahead of, of tariffs. And I think that's why we're seeing now a rolling off of some of the boost you saw in the manufacturing sector as well, which first showed itself, as you said, Sarah, in the regional surveys, and I think will now be seen in the ISM data. Yeah, but Lizanne, to the extent that the market has already anticipated that, uh, I mean, what's an appropriate multiple at this point that you're thinking about for this year? when it comes to the S&P, as we, not long from now, we're going to head into another earnings season and start to get some answers, at least, in terms of what the underlying numbers look like. I, I never think of, of an appropriate multiple in, in point terms. I think about the background environment, the fact that we have tightening financial conditions. Ostensibly, we're still in a rate hiking cycle. Both of those things tend to put downward pressure on multiples. I also think of valuation as much as a sentiment indicator as anything else. There are times where investors are simply willing to pay more for stocks. It is not really a sort of a technical indicator that is just based on macro or even micro fundamentals. So I think with earnings growth rolling over and probably more to go on the downside in terms of, of, of cuts, particularly because you're still looking at double digit expectations for the energy sector. So I think we haven't yet fully reflected the current environment into next year's earnings in a macro environment that suggests downward pressure on multiples. That means that with, with earnings growth rolling over, you need multiple expansion, I think, to be supportive for the market. And I just don't think the conditions exist for multiple expansion without earnings doing a lot of that heavy lifting, which I don't anticipate.